everybody. Back today with another video in our short series on dealing with troublesome issues in time intelligence, and particularly those issues caused by the weak granularity and some of the, the troubles that can cause in the irregular number of weeks in a year. And so, interesting scenario for you today. Um, this came up a couple of times recently in our user forum, and what people wanted to do was to take a a visual, a line graph or a bar chart, and vary it dynamically on the start date. And so in this case, what we've got is we've got our, our same data set that we worked with last time on average spot price per barrel of oil. And what we want to do is we want to just take and be able to vary, instead of just always starting at the beginning in January, be able to click and have that, that visual change to a different start date but always show one year of data. And we can just click through. And there's a number of reasons you might want to do this. Um, it could be that you have a metric that is constantly being readjusted in terms of how it's calculated. And so you may only want to show the, the data from the period of the readjustment forward. Um, another thing that um, I could see wanting to do would be to take an and visualize this in an animated way. So basically take your data and step forward using the, uh, the play axis and have that change the start date month by month to show kind of how that changes in a 12 month period over time. And I think that's an interesting and, and useful visual. And there's a whole bunch of different business cases I could see for this, but it also represents kind of theoretically and conceptually an interesting problem that deals with a number of key issues related to DAX and data modeling. So I think it's it's useful to dig in on this one. And we'll, to do so, we'll go to Power BI. And we'll take a look at our data model first. And again, this is a really simple data model that we used last time just in terms of our extended dates table and our spot price. And it's connected on the, the date. And so one of the things we're gonna be we're gonna be working closely with here is offsets. And just to remind you how the offsets in the extended date table work, that those are calculated dynamically each time the report is either refreshed or opened. And it's through the M code. And what it does is for, say, a, a monthly offset, it takes the, the current month and assigns that a number of zero. And then the previous month gets a negative one. Two months back, gets a negative two. And then the next month, looking forward in the future, gets a positive one, positive two for two months in the future, and so on. And it's, it's a simple concept, but it's incredibly powerful because when you're dealing with things like months or quarters or weeks, if you're not dealing with an offset, which is a continuous series of numbers, what you have to do when you're moving forwards and back is you have to conditionally look and say, okay, am I at, say, January? And if I go back a month, then I've got to go back to December. So I'm not going back from one to zero, I'm going back from one to 12. And that creates a fair amount of complexity sometimes in your, in your calculations. So using offsets, going back a month is always minus one, and going forward a month is always plus one, regardless of where in that, in that year you might be. So in the past, I've talked about rubber ducking, and that's verbalizing your strategy out loud before you start digging in and writing your DAX. So in, in thinking about how I would handle this from a monthly context, what I would do is um, basically come up with first based on the, the year and the month selected. And we're gonna wanna select those using a disconnected table. Because if you think about it, that with the exception of selecting January, every other selection is gonna involve crossing years. And so if you want 12 months starting in March, you're going to end up with at least two months in the, in the subsequent year. And so if you use a connected slicer, 
you're only going to filter for that year and you're not going to be able to step forward into the into the next year so we're going to we're going to do this with a disconnected table for both the the month and the the year so in thinking about that what we want to do is and this is kind of what i worked through in my head first is we want to harvest the the offset the first offset dealing with the starting date and then we want to move that offset forward by 12 12 months and then only look at the the dates that are within that set of offsets and so let me show you what that looks like when we when we we actually delve into the dax and so here we go so what we've got is this within range monthly and we select our year and this is just harvesting from the the disconnected year table we select our month which is harvesting from the disconnected month table and i've got this other parameter here which is if there's no selection made it just defaults to january and that's primarily just for debugging purposes so then if we look at the the starting month offset what we've got is we calculate the max offset and then we filter we remove all the 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 filters the currently on the dates table and then we filter down to the selected month and selected year and there should be for each month only one offset that corresponds to that month and year so from that point what we can do is we can take the ending offset which is just the starting offset plus 11 months so we move forward 11 months and that's because it's inclusive of that first month and then what we do is we just take and we look at each each selected date and then whether it falls within the initial month offset and the end month offset and if it falls within that that period we give it a one and if not we give it a zero and then we take that that one zero result in our visual and if we go back to our monthly and we look at this visual we've got this within range which is what we just created and we set that equal to one so it's only those months within that starting to ending offset and this this seems to work great so if we we go to february we go february to january if we start in december december to november and we can check that out and it seems to check out just fine for each year okay so so far so good and and this one is just going to give a dot because the data set ends in 2021 so in december 2021 there's no additional data moving forward so that's that's behaving exactly as we would expect so let's now take a look and see what this looks like from a weekly standpoint and if we we pull up the dax from this this looks very similar and you can see there's if you're paying attention weekly within range weekly wrong and so to tip off this is not going to work and it doesn't work for a couple of reasons and let me let me show you on the on the visual that when we start it, it you start initially it looks okay so we've got 2019 we've got week one it goes week one to week 52 and that that looks good and then if we we step forward say to week 15 it's week 15 to week 14 of the subsequent year that's looking good too but now if we dig in what we find is in in years like 2020 that have a 53rd week and some weeks in that iso week schedule have a 52nd week and some have a 53rd and this pre presents a lot of problems and you can see where this starts to manifest itself that here we've got the right starting period 2020 week 15 but then the ending period is 2021 week 13 instead of week 14 and if we go back here to week one what we see it starts out okay 
but it ends at week 52. And if we look at our, our week 53 calculation here, the max week number for 2020 and 2021 is 53 weeks. So this is not going to work for, for weekly granularity. And so let's take a look and see what we can do to make this work. So if we go back to our, our DAX, our within range wrong, um, one of the things we know we need to fix is right here, is that start week offset plus 51, because in some cases that 51 is going to be correct where there's only 52 weeks in a year. But in the, in the years where there's 53 weeks, it's going to leave off that last period. And that's exactly what we saw in the, in the, first, um, the first time we looked at the, the dynamic visual for weeks, that it would leave off that final period in years 20, 2020 and 2021. So we know we've got to fix that. So if we, we go to the um, within range weekly, and this actually looks simpler than the earlier measure, but part of the reason is because I pulled out the the variables and made those measures so that I could I could track those more easily in a debugging fashion. Um, but what I'll, what I can tell you is as I was debugging this, um, I fixed the week 52 53 problem, and it didn't fix the pro the overall problem that I was still getting that. Um, that problem with week one and having it not produce the the full correct range. And so it really took me a while to figure out what was going on. I actually went back and I rubber ducked this again. And this was actually where the light bulb came on that I started to talk through and I said, okay, what we want to do is we want to take the, the max um, week number or the max offset defined by a given year and week number. And as I, as I said that, I thought, oh, you know what? Weeks are strange in that at the boundary conditions on week one and week 50, 52 or 53 sometimes, it's not going to be the case as it is for months and quarters that a year and a period uniquely determines an offset. And so I said, let me, let me go test that. This table, what I did is just pulled out year and ISO week number and offset. And the interesting thing you can see here, you can see why this, this didn't work in that if we go to the within range wrong, here we go. So we've got this, this, starting, this starting offset measure and we're calculating the max offset, stripping the, um, the filter off of dates and then imposing the filter on selected week and selected year with the assumption that this would lead to the correct offset. But it doesn't because in, in all the other cases, it doesn't matter if you're using max offset or min offset. All you're doing is you're wrapping an aggregator around that so that you're not putting a naked column in a calculate statement. But it, it, if it uniquely determines that it doesn't matter what aggregator you use, you could use average, you could use min, you could use max. But if we go back here to the debug, what we see is a year and a week number does not uniquely determine a weekly offset in that first period. And so what I was getting was the max offset, which is this 161, when what I wanted was the min offset of, two, of 213. And so what I did is came up with a what I, what I think is a pretty bulletproof way of doing this, you could use min, but to me, it made even more sense to do something different, which was to create this week one offset measure. And what I wanted to do here was to take the, wrap it in the min, but it could be the max here because what we're doing, what we're doing in this case is we're not dealing, in order to get the week one offset, we're dealing with week two because week two never gets split. Um, that regardless of whether there's 52 or 53 weeks, week two stays intact. So what we can do here is filter down to week two, get the offset. And as I said, it could be min, could be max. It doesn't matter because this will be a unique combination. And then once we get that 
week two offset, we just subtract one from it and that will unambiguously give us the week one offset. So that ends up solving that problem. And then if we go back to within range weekly, so what we're doing here is if the harvest number is week, is for week one, we calculate that week one offset. If it's not week one, we just calculate the starting week offset as we did in the in the previous monthly calculation. And then the end week offset is going to be the beginning week offset that we, we calculated here plus the max week number. And that's going to be either 52 or 53. And then we just subtract one because we don't want to double count this, this starting offset. So now what we've got is we've got an accurate beginning offset, an accurate ending offset, and then we can do the same construct that we did for, for monthly, which is to just say we're going to filter the, the weeks such that anything that falls between the beginning and the ending offset gets a 1, anything that doesn't gets a 0. And then we're going to place that within range weekly into the filter pane. And if we look here, you'll see it's within range weekly. And now when we, when we calculate this, so let's 2019, it's calculating week five all the way to week four of the subsequent year. But then if we go to 2020, where it was dropping that period later, you can see it goes from five to four correctly. And when we go to week one in 2020, it's calculating 1 to 53. And so everything is looking exactly right here. So now we can check this out and we can go to our um, our play axis and run that in the, the weak granularity. And we can see that that is working properly just like it did in the month context. So that's a pretty deep dive in time intelligence and particularly some of the problems surrounding weak number. Um, I hope you found that helpful and maybe gave some good food for thought and some additional tools in your toolbox when you're dealing with uh, with a problematic week uh, situation. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website. Plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.